Welcome, this is Terry Fox. Uh, this is a continuing uh, set of videos on signal integrity and electromagnetic compliance, uh, part of my Pro Tune-Up course. This particular video has to do with how to quiet noisy switching power supplies. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, then tfox at siemc.com. There's the phone number, address, or there's the uh, website. Okay, so off we go. Now, first of all, there are an awful lot of switchers out there that I call switchers from hell. And the reason that they are such a problem is because, in general, they have been implemented in a poor fashion. First of all, you have to understand what, what are the threats from these switching power supplies. The first thing is massive DIDT. When I look at these MOSFETs that are turning on and off uh, the, the, the power uh, going into this inductor or transformer or whatever it is, realize that this thing is switching on and off someplace between 7 and 10 amps. It is doing it probably at a megahertz kind of rate. Uh, it probably has edge rates of 2 nanoseconds or less. And the fact is that when you start switching that much current that fast and doing it with fast edge rates, you end up with a lot of change in current with respect to time. Now that change in current with respect to time, of course, is throwing out fairly substantial magnetic fields. And if you go back to your uh, Maxwell's equations, magnetic fields and electric currents, uh, you know, the magnetic field creates an electric current, the electric current creates a current that in turn creates another magnetic field. So that is a problem right there, just this massive switching that you've got going on. A second thing that goes on is that throughout uh, the controller, uh, throughout any of the, the, the silicon electronics that we've got there, there are these PN junctions, and those PN junctions form mixers. So when I get a mixer, I can take in F1 and F2, and I can get out F1 plus F2, F1 minus F2, etc. So you can have a, a full uh, spectrum of frequencies coming out of this, and it's not just simply uh, let's say that this was switching at 500 kilohertz, so uh, I might have a uh, frequency at 500 kilohertz, then I'd probably have the third harmonic, which would be 1.5 uh, megahertz, then the next harmonic that would go up would uh, uh, probably be the fifth harmonic, which would be about uh, 2.5 megahertz. But when you consider the fact that I've got a 2 nanosecond rise time, that means that I have got uh, edges that are above 500 megahertz or up to 500 megahertz plus all these mixing products. So consequently I've got a massive noise generator here. Now a magnetic field will induce an electric current but an electric current will also induce a magnetic uh, field. Excuse me for misspelling that there. Alright, now what are the solutions? First and foremost, you need to learn how to speak snubber. Now, Rudy Severins, who's a guy that's even older than I am, he used to be the switching power supply guy for Tektronix for probably 40 years. Rudy wrote a book that was about uh, switching power supply design and specific sn specifically snubber design. So this is the old website address that you could get at it which was snubberdesign.com and it was called the snubberbook.html etc. And this thing I think it was like $75 or something like that to download it but it is undoubtedly the best snubber design book I've ever seen. I mean it finally brought this thing out of the black magic and bat wing sort of world and brought it into an area because if I can take this DIDT that's going through here if instead of having that 2 nanosecond edge on it which means I've got a 500 uh, megahertz uh, element in there if I could basically make that look like a sine wave or as close to a sine wave as possible then what would happen is I would have 500 kilohertz 1.5 megahertz 
than maybe 2.5 megahertz and this would be much easier to deal with than when those frequencies are getting up into the hundreds of megahertz range. So that's the first thing that we need to do. The second thing that we need to do is we need to have proper grounding. There needs to be a single ground point between the switcher ground and the system ground. Now that implies that you're not going to write route switching currents on the system ground. That is, I'm going to treat this as a complete unit and that unit will only connect to system ground at a single point. The next thing is I need to provide a controlled return current paths, control return current paths. That means you've got to understand how stitching vias and proper shielding work in order to make this an isolated uh, you know uh, power generation or power conversion scheme that, uh, that the only thing it does is what it gives back to you is just simply a DC current that's 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 pretty pretty clean. Okay, last point, do not route switching currents on the system ground. We'll get into that a little bit more later, but let's start down through these things. Snubber designs, you're just going to have to go there and read Rudy's book to get a hold of that. So here we go. If I have a single point ground, well, when I look at grounding in general, it's either single point or it's everywhere ground. When I've got a single point ground, it says at this one point, that's where ground exists between whatever is inside the blue box here and whatever is outside the blue box. There's only one point at which system ground and chassis ground are the same or switcher ground and system ground, however you want to look at that. Now when that happens, any current goes in and it comes directly back out. I cannot make any current loops out of this thing as long as there is a single point ground. Now as soon as you give me one other location that is also grounded, now I can have a loop that goes in here, around, and back, and as soon as you've got that ground loop, that is what opens the door for all kinds of mischief. So we have to stick in this notion of strictly a single point ground. Now. If I use snubbers to smooth out the switching current, this will minimize uh, the noise in the first place. The second uh, attack that I've got to use is to isolate the switcher. So I want to have a single point ground. So for example, if this little blue box was my switcher and it's sitting on my system board someplace, then I want to have a single point ground, which is the switcher ground and it's also the system ground and right beside that single point ground is where the power going out and the power going in is going to go. So everything that regards this module is going to be isolated to right here to this very close proximity where whether it's current going in or current going out they're going in and out at a localized uh, position. Now the second thing we've got to say is I don't want to have switcher current on the system ground. So in other words, if this happens to be my electronics that's part of the switcher, what I would like to do is, if possible, I would like to route all of my routing on layer 1 above the ground plane and then simply have this single point ground right here. Now, oftentimes you get into a problem where you have to do crossovers. So if you have to do crossovers, and I have to have a second layer in order to handle the co crossover, do not run the switcher ground on system ground. Wrong thing to do. Look at my uh, shielding videos and you'll understand that better. But nonetheless, if you have to have a way to cross over, then what we want to do is to take the system ground, we will carve it out, we will put ground down here on layer 3 instead of on layer 4, we will stitch system ground to this ground pore on layer 3 and that's what all these vias represent right here. Those are just stitching vias to in essence make a bathtub where I've got enough resources so I can route that switcher and then bring it out to a single point ground. 
All right, so I'm still single point ground and I'm still keeping the currents off my system ground and I'm and I'm making everything here local any loops that are part of this switcher they are local to that area and when I look at that as a whole this thing is an isolated unit with just one way in and one way out ie single point ground now the problem with this comes is that oftentimes the capacitors for the switcher may be on the bottom of the board now if that's the case then we have to go back and say well alright how do I put a capacitor down here when maybe the electronics is up here now you've got to control where the currents flow so if I was doing a high speed signal going from this layer to the bottom layer what I would do is I would have stitching vias that would tie ground to ground and that way the signal current comes down the return current can follow that stitching via back to the other ground as I change ground references so that's all I'm trying to show here is that if you have to go from the upper structure where maybe you've made this little bathtub arrangement but you need to go to the opposite side of the board maybe to a big capacitor then for heaven's sakes put in ground stitching vias tying this ground to that ground right beside that signal so we're trying to isolate what is going on here and we're trying to have our single point ground now do not cut the ground plane uh, if you're trying to cut the ground plane in an attempt to isolate switcher noise that is dumb uh, it, it just means you don't understand how shielding works so go review my video on shielding if that does not make it clear please sign up for an hour of consulting because even at my outrageous rates uh, it will still save you a lot of time and money and aggravation so please 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 don't go around trying to cut ground planes in order to isolate noise that simply doesn't work